Should be pretty easy. How about 14%? Do you want me to give you a clue? There is the clue. <laughs> Anybody? Top 100 websites in the world, 14% of them run on WordPress. And then we have this. Oh, that's easy. Okay. <laughs> Number of 32% of websites are run by WordPress. But, but how do you get that statistic? Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Which statistic? The 17. 32%. 32 It's on the website. <laughs> there, it's on the website, bro. <laughs> it's on the website. Okay. So I want to, oh, then the network went. So I wanted to give you something else. So my name is Oduor Jagero. I have other names, which are basically English names. One is Ken, another one is Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> but I like my witch names. These are my witch names. In, in, my Luo, in my Luo culture, every person has to be given a name. This, your soul, that, that separates you from everyone else. You cannot find, so that the spirit, the, the force that moves you, if you Luo, then it's Odur, it means midnight. Yeah, yeah. and then Jagero means, <laughs> I don't want to say. <laughs> I don't want to say, I don't want to say. So I want to tell you what I am doing right now. Then I'm going to tell you my story. And uh, I am here because of open source. Uh, one of the things that you should know is that I was born, I w I'm the only member of my family that was not born in a hospital. My mother gave birth to me on the, on, on the roadside, walking to the hospital. And that is why my nose is a little big. <laughs> Because she thinks that I fell on the road. <laughs> and my head is a bit out of shape. That's what she says. Okay? So I'm going to tell you what I am now. So this is my life. What we will discuss is open source. Then we'll discuss my life. Then my writing. And how it all goes back to the topic. Okay? So... Um, Three things that define me. I am the lead CMS Africa, and I am CEO of coremedia.co.ke that does basically web design. I am a writer and a novelist, stroke novelist, okay? So uh, this is CMS Africa Summit, an event that I organize, that I founded and organize hopes from one African country to the other every year. Uh, last year, this year we were in Kigali, Rwanda. Uh, that is, uh, there should be a picture of Kigali, Rwanda. Bit of the crowd. The first picture is also Kigali, Rwanda. Uh, we were in Abuja last year. Uh, Cape Town. Awesome. Cape Town 2019. I am very excited. Are you excited? So I, if, you, if, you, if you are fired up about organizing events, I've been talking to a few people, but if you are really fired up about organizing events, you can speak with me, we can talk, we can make this the biggest event in Cape Town after World Camp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that because of Bruce, he's a big man, man. <laughs> All right, so Core Media is a, is a company that uh, basically does branding and web design. And... Uh, and that is, that is something that I really love. And then I am also a writer, all right? I, I, write, I write short stories, I write poem, poetry, and I write novels. So those are, my, those, are, that's my those are my books. Why the Hospital Corridor is White is fiction about uh, something. <laughs> the Ghost of 1894 is a story that I recite in Rwanda. It, 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 it talks about what led to the genocide in 1994. So I recite 100 years before the genocide. 
And then uh, there is The True Citizen. That's an urban fiction that uh, talks about a cop who falls in love with someone. And then we have Semicolon is about a lady that, ha that, that wants to commit suicide, but first she has to travel the world. So that's about me. That's what I do now. Okay, a lot of things. And guess what? The amount of brain power that he use is just 4.7. <laughs> I am not kidding. Right? I have a family. That's my daughter right there. And the woman of my life. <laughs> right? So that's, 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 that's about me. I live in Nairobi. <sighs> I am honestly telling you, don't grow up. It's a trap. And that is how my story starts. So, my story is not very nice. Uh, I was born about 25 kilometers off my local town called Kisumu. That's about 350 miles from the capital city, Nairobi. And, um, my mother was a housewife, and my father was an accountant, and also a drunkard. And uh, he should have taken care of us. But the bottle man, the bottle took him away. So I went to school, and then uh, very difficult times. No school fees, no nothing, because all the money was, most of the money was going to the mighty bottle. And then I finished by the grace of, of who that guy called Lucky Dube sings about, you know. Uh, so in 2001, after my high school, my father died of depression. I guess I blame alcohol. And then uh, I needed to go to college. And there was no money to go to college. I really wanted to be a journalist and a writer. So my idea of going to college was like flushed. Okay? And then uh, I say to myself, I want to go to the capital city of Nairobi and study. But there was no way of doing that. My uncle was in Nairobi city. Nairobi is a very dramatic city, huge. Yes, I don't know what to compare it with Joburg. You know, chaos. Joburg? Yeah? Yeah, something like that. So my uncle was living there, and I told him I want to go there. No, I didn't tell him, actually, because he wouldn't let me. That Ruby staff don't want an extra mouth to feed, bro. So I went anyway, <laughs> without telling him. So I went there, it was drizzling when I reached the city of Nairobi in 2004. And uh, uh, I went to his house. He was out on a business trip, got me back when he came back, and said hi. <laughs> <laughs> said hi. And then he didn't ask me anything. I started school. Because my mother told me that this is gonna make everything work. My mother, I don't know, I think she was bluffing, but she told me, I'll make everything work. So she didn't, because five months into my college, she died. And so I remained in the city without nothing. The college told me that, boy, you need to get us fees. We're doing away with your classes. So I dodged them for six months until my certificate. And then when my certificate was done, I told my head of department, a good lady, that, you know what, I am leaving school. And she told me, wow, so why? So, psh, life is hard. She told me to write a letter to the dean. And uh, I was given scholarship for three years. I went in, come out, went in, come out with a big badge saying that I have finished school fees. And I was rolling. So then I was now a professional writer. And I started writing. I never got employed, which is a bad thing. 
I only got employed for 30 minutes for sure. 30 minutes. So when this guy gave me a job to write, and by that time I was already writing a lot and doing scripts for, for, for the theaters around Nairobi. And then this guy told me that I've got a very good job that you need to do. It was paying very well, $600 a month by then, you know. And then I realized after that meeting that I had four meetings to go to the day I went to, to, to report for the work. So I told this gentleman that, you know what, I have meetings I cannot afford to miss. So I took my laptop bag. So when, I, when waiting for that gentleman, I realized that I am not able to do anything anymore because I'm going to be there from eight to five. So I never went back. Okay. So I've never been employed since then. I've just been doing this thing. So that, that brings me to how WordPress and open source saved my life. Okay. Because then I was in the city of Nairobi with only a pen and I needed to write. And I needed people. By then Facebook was there, but then people were having internet in Nairobi. And the, I needed to take my work of writing out there. So I started a blog on WordPress. Woo. All right? Started writing poetry on WordPress and sharing on Facebook. Started doing this and sharing on Facebook. Then I got a friend of mine who was doing Joomla. He started doing uh, the, the, the Joomla, Joomla Day, Joomla Day Kenya, all right? Which is an equivalent of WordPress, WordCamp, right? So I was, I was helping him post on his, on his blog, Joomla Day, uh, uh, Joomla blog, and I was posting on, on WordPress. And that is how people knew that I was a writer because of WordPress. And that is how a young boy that was born on the side of the road got his work out there to the world through WordPress. And, 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 and when you look at the whole thing, you begin to realize how important WordPress is. You begin to realize how important open source is to the world. And I was reading of a gentleman yesterday in the night who has made 12 million US dollars on one WordPress theme. 12 million on one WordPress theme. And, 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 and that is how open source can change the world. 330 million Africans live in poverty and hunger. You know, they are not able to get anything like breakfast, any lunch, any supper. 330 million, that is a whooping 24.7.7 of Africans. That, some of them do not know that open source can change their lives. And nobody is talking to them about how open source can change their lives, how WordPress can change their lives, how Drupal can change their lives, how Magento can change their lives. You know? So, and we meet these people every day, and we don't tell them anything about these things. You know? And, and if somebody had told me about WordPress and what WordPress can do, if somebody had told me what Drupal is, what Magento is, and what Magento can do, before I discovered it myself, then my life would have been changed before it was changed. Okay? That is the statistics. In Africa, 28%, 300 million. And, and when everybody talks about money, we do not realize what, what money can do and what the human capability is towards you know, doing all these things. So, so my message, I guess, from Kenya to Cape Town is that do not underestimate open source because it's going to change the world. It is already changing the world. 
And one of the greatest things about open source is the collaboration part of open source. And when, we, when I talk to, to Yop about, about, about a level playground, and that is the reason why I think they should not, they should no, when, when there is a time we were having a CMS Africa Summit in Nairobi and there was this very heated exchange, exchange between people, the lovers of WordPress, lovers of Drupal, and lovers of Joomla, and lovers of, 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 of other CMSs like Python and all these things about how good one is and how bad the other one is. You know, and, and I, I think that is irrelevant in, in as far as uh, open source is, is concerned. Because one way or the other, the one complements the other, you know? And, 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 and that, is, that is, when I went to Joomla World Conference in, um, in America, Boston, one of the people that was speaking there was actually Matt, giving the key speech at a Joomla World Conference. He was the key speaker. And, and, and I think he led the way in a very, in a very drastic, in a, it, it, led, it, it did something that really changed how people were looking at, at open source softwares, like enemies of each other. Uh, every year at CMS Africa, and, and I, want to, I want to thank Yop for organizing the, 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 the Automatic to come to, the, to CMS Africa every year. In fact, Automatic has been sponsoring CMS Africa Summit for the last four years. You know, let's give them a hand. And at CMS Africa Summit, you find these guys exchanging notes on how we can col collaborate, you know, as, as, an, as an open source community and change the world. You know? So, so there is so much happening in Africa right now. You know? The entire time, duration of my stay in Cape Town, I have not been driven by a South African in a taxi. Once, today in the morning. But the entire time, Africa has been collaborating. Let me use the word. Sure. I've been driven as a Zimbabwean. I've been driven by, by a Malawian. I've been driven by, by, by somebody from Botswana. And all these other guys, you know, when we talk about the things that happen in South Africa, such as the, you know, the, the, the tug of war and the, and the other things that I don't want to discuss in, in, in details, is that uh, the thing is human beings are not supposed to be enemies. And I've realized it the hard way. In Kenya, there is this thing called tribalism. I don't know if it's here in South Africa. Yes. You know? Like, my tribe... It's called the Luo. Then the other tribe is called the Kikuyu, and then the other tribe is called the Kamba. And these guys are always fighting, especially my tribe and the Kikuyu tribe. They're always fighting. You know? And for me as a Luo, when I'm selling my books, I keep, I keep all the names of people who have bought my books, the names. And if you look at them, all the people that have bought my names, the Kikuyu, which is my most hated tribe, buys my book more than 80%. <laughs> more than my own tribe, which is a paltry 10%. So if I hate the Kikuyu, then I look like a fool. You know? If if a white South African hates a black South African, then he looks like a fool. If a black South African hates a white South African, then he looks like a fool. And most of, most, most, if you look at a human being, you know, if you look, what, what time is it, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> well, how many minutes do I have? I am good, yeah? Okay, cool. What I have realized is that a human being has very deep-seated problems. And if you approach that human being because you think he's this way or the other, then you are being extremely unfair to that person. Because most of his sins are not his sins. Most of her sins are not her sins. Okay? So I, I want to tell you that start loving people. Like, like open source loves people. 
because nobody loves people like open source. <laughs> no one. No one loves people like open source. It has changed my life dramatically. And the kind of collaboration that I have gotten from the open source community is unbelievable. The, the company that is making the application for CMS Africa Summit is domiciled in Poznan, Poland. A gentleman called Kuba Lewinsky, a guy that I met online and has been supporting the app for the last four years without a single cent. He has been coming to CMS Africa Summit on his own money for the last four years. Okay? <laughs> Job is a Belgian living in South Africa. <laughs> he has been so helpful with, a t with his team. You know, what they are trying to do is to help humanity. And that is the soft side of business. The soft side of business has to help humanity. And I always say this thing, when pe some people come to me to build them websites for free, and I do build websites for free when they can't afford it. Because it is my duty to help those that are my neighbors. Okay? So, so I, my message from Kenya is that humans are very good. I am a, I am a specimen. I, I am a... I am a I am a confession that humans are very good. And, and when you have a problem, let me tell you a story that happened last night. <laughs> I was walking down from my hotel room looking for a, for, a, for a restaurant to eat something. And then I strolled into this restaurant called Jerry's. <laughs> <laughs> very lively restaurant, lot of people. And when I get there, I saw the big guy. He's sitting at the corner. And then I see some guy that works for 10 up. 10 up. He's in there talking. And then I joined them. I didn't know they were there. Turns out they were having a dinner. All right? Turns out they were having a dinner. And I joined them. And we spoke and we laughed. There is this gentleman that looks like a Jew. I think he's seated somewhere. Oh, right there. <laughs> And his brother, his brother is somewhere. Yeah, his brother is, is there, yeah? So we talked and we chatted, we talked about an array of topics. You know, he asked me a lot of questions about writing, about this thing, and we were sharing all the food. And then the bill comes, a long bill. <laughs> it was long, you know, like the supermarket team for, the camp, for, 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 for an organization. And then the guy picks the bill and pays it. The Jew over, uh, over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, 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 so that is how humanity operates, yeah. you know, and when you start ha ha loving people that are next to you, then you start to feel good, yeah. right? And so if there is somebody that you need to help, be an open source to that person sure. because it's, 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 very, it's very, very important. It's very, very important. So my, my, that is, that is all I wanted to say today, that open source has made me, open source has made lots of people, and it is time for us to realize that fact and start opening up ourselves. Open your companies to people that want internship. Open your, your, your spaces for people who want to work. I remember when I was working in Nairobi, I couldn't afford internet completely. In South Africa, oh dear, internet is expensive here. <laughs> when I went, when I was at the airport and they told me to give them $20 for one GB, I was like, what are you talking about? That is 50 GB in Kenya. 50. And it's even more in, in, in Nigeria. Lagos or Abuja, internet is like water. <laughs> so if somebody does not have internet, Please allow these young people to come into your office and, and work because the next day it will be their day. They will help your children, I am telling you for a fact. This is all I want to say. I hope the internet has come so that I, I read you more statistic, statistics <laughs> for, for WordPress. Internet, here we go, 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 here we go. <laughs> I'm out of luck. It's made some <laughs> yeah. 
I'm out of luck. So I want to end my conversation by saying that uh, I am very privileged to have known about WordPress. I am very privileged to have known about Tomatic. I'm very privileged to have known about Drupal, Joomla, Magento, and all these things. And uh, I hope that you will go out there and use WordPress to change the world, okay? Thank you very much. Are there questions? Yeah, so if we're going to have any questions, please raise your hand. I'll run across to you. I'm going to come to this gentleman first because he's closer to me. Here you go, so do you have a question for Joe Nice presentation. Thank you. Just a quick question. Uh, what is the objective of uh, CLS Africa training and uh, how are you uh, measuring the success of it? Okay. <laughs> so. CMS, CMS Africa actually happened by accident. We were doing Joomla Day. I didn't know about WordCamp then. We were doing Joomla Day, and then uh, lots of other people were coming that were not interested in Joomla. And I was, what the hell, who the hell are these guys? If you're not interested in Joomla, why are you here? I realized that these guys, were, some of them were, were developing using Drupal and all the rest of the CMSs. But they were coming because it was fun. You know, it was really, really fun. And so I sat down and realized, why don't I do an event that brings together all these guys? You know, so that is, that is, that is, that is, that's why it started. And so what happens is that uh, it has workshops for different CMSs. Like, for example, we can have 11.30. We are having different workshops, like four workshops running at the same time. One is, one is WordPress, one is Joomla, and one is this, and one is this. And then we have a common room sometimes, you know, where you can go and ask questions. So the, the idea is to, I guess, according to my subject, is to my, my topic, is to create a level playing ground for anybody who wants to use open source software. So that is, that is, that is the reason why I started CMS Africa. And uh, that is why I guess everybody loves it, whether you're coming from Joomla, whether you're coming from uh, Magento, Python, or, or whatever. And then there are business topics. We don't just dis discuss uh, the practical, so the workshops. We also have, uh, uh, you know, other business topics such as the one that was done by the lovely lady that was there before break time. Okay, answers your question. Oh, my books are on Amazon. Type my name on Amazon and everything pops up. Oh, awesome. Okay. Cool. Yep. All right. Yes. <laughs> there is one there. there is. I just wanted to make a comment. So, so next year, South Africa is going to be in Cape Town in March. If people here want to get involved or help you, how should they do that? Okay. All right, so uh, CMS Africa Summit is a community. It's, 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 it's very less of a, of a business thing. It's, a very, it's very much of a community. So what we, the, the difficult part of CMS Africa Summit is organization because every year it's in a different country and it takes a company or people in those countries to help organize it. So the people that I'm looking for are people who can help me organize, help us organize the event. People who are marketers, people who can connect us with sponsors, People who can connect us with venues and all those kind of things. Most important thing is to come, my friend. <laughs> the most important thing is to come, my friend. So uh, it is, you just go to CMS. If you want to speak, you can go to cmsafricasummit.org. cmsafricasummit.org, and you can present yourself as a speaker. We already have about 20 people speaking. Sure. Yeah, so that is, that's how you can help. And, uh, and my, my, my email is my name, Jagero, and cmsafrica.org. You can write me an email, okay? Um, yes, there is a question right there. Oh. Mr. Sure. Uh, 
You mean like how to make sure that they have the money to run the operations? Well, to rely less on um, just getting people to give you money, which you know, I think we ask that all the time. Um, but how can, what are some of the ways that you can innovate using tech? Uh, to give somebody who gives you money, something for that money without, you know. And uh, to answer that question, I think uh, we have to go back to WordPress.org and WordPress.com. I think. Uh, somebody told me that open source does not mean free. Yeah? yeah? And so, and so this, is, this is one of the problems, this is one of the conversations that is going on right now with Joomla. Because they are really struggling in terms of how to make it sustainable. Uh, I mean, last year, this year they have cut the funding for, what, for, for Joomla Day by, uh, by, they usually give $1,500 to every Joomla Day that happens. This year it has been cut all the way back to $500. You have to look for that money to do the, your event. You know, and and that, is, that, is, that is difficult, and their marketing, 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 marketing money has really shrunk over the years. Uh, I think that an organization so big as Joomla shouldn't be suffering. I mean, there should be ways of getting money. I mean, they have, they have these volunteers that make all these plugins, and, uh, and I believe that something has to be done to be provided. I mean, you can provide the main thing, wordpress.org, for free to everyone, and then you have to be a little bit creative in the way you have to get money. And, uh, and, and I also think that... Uh, most of the, what my pro, the problematic thing I see with most of the CMSs and open source is that uh, they, I'm sorry to say, overexploit the use, using of, uh, of, 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 I mean, you must find people that are, that core people that are working for, as, for, for, for open source. There has to be a core, uh, you know, group that is working that are probably paid and then you have volunteers around the world. But if you have volunteers everywhere, then it becomes very difficult to, to even get people. For example, in a CMS, a CMS that I don't want to talk about, you know, does not have a proper communication structure. And if you do not have a proper communication structure, I don't know how you can even organize a gala or a dinner for people to give money towards your project. So I think there are creative ways that you can do that. I think, I don't know if that answers your question. A little bit, okay? Yeah. All right, we've got time for one more question for Jaira. Is there anyone who wants to speak to the man's brain button? Thank you very much, everyone. Great, can we have a, a round of applause?